Today, we're catching up with Echo Kellum for a preview of the can't miss finale of Arrow. And Jim Lee is guiding us through the latest must read comics, so get ready for DC All Access. Hey guys, I am Tiffany Smith, and it is time for DC Nation, where we get a preview of this week's essential comics straight from the publisher's desk. First off, I'm going to start with uh, No Justice, Justice mm -hmm. League No Justice. Uh, it's written by Scott Snyder, James Tynan IV, Josh Williamson, drawn by Francis Manipole and Marcus Toe. And what we love about this is that it is a spin-off uh, leading out of Metal, which uh, Snyder helmed. And it really kind of introduces what's beyond the source wall, mm -hmm. right? It's broken, and we realize the DC Universe is really just a small drop within this greater bucket of this stuff that we know nothing about. And so it introduces these very celestial kind of beings that come to Earth, and there's a reckoning. And so you see basically all the Justice League being activated. Mm -hmm. And what we love about this is that it's not just a standalone event, it leads into a bigger thing with a re relaunch of Justice League number one, mm -hmm. uh, written by Scott Snyder, and a lot of other great Justice League material. And their, their intent really is to have Justice they kind of drive the DC universe, have their stories really matter, and that's always the the thing we have to like look out for as publishers. Mm -hmm. Is like, is are the Batman stories and Batman dictating who Batman is, and do the stories in Justice League where Batman appears? How do they tie in together? Yeah. And sometimes they they don't. And so, uh, what we're trying to do is kind of bring marry the two together so that you have kind of one vision of who Batman is and all these characters that make up the Justice League. What was your reaction when Scott told you that he was going to break the Source Wall? Oh, um, I was like, we haven't done that before yet? I mean, <laughs> you would think like, yeah, what is past that? I mean, I think the first question any creator has is, you're in a room, the first question is, well, what's outside that room, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, as a creative. And I think uh, people didn't want to go there because I think they didn't know and they want to be respectful of the fourth world and all that. Um, but also that if you do go beyond that, you've got to create something that can sort of st stand toe to toe with Jack Kirby's fourth yeah. world, right? And I think what we loved about Scott's take on metal and everything he's doing with No Justice and Justice League after that is he's just going for broke. He's basically yeah. saying, you know, one of the hallmarks of the DC universe has been they've never been shy to kind of do big, cosmic, mind blowing things with mm -hmm. their characters, right? It's not always like robbing banks and you know, just being in Central City or whatever, they've basically gone and done stuff that's, you know, like you think about the multiverse or the dark multiverse. Yeah. These are things that really didn't exist in fiction until DC really kind of memorialized it and made it a real thing. And so that's kind of the thinking and that kind of drove this idea of like, let's break this open. Then you realize, wait, crap, we're just a little drop uh, yeah. in this gi giant sort of cosmos. Crap, what's beyond there? And yeah. I think it's scary because now we got to create all that. Yeah. Uh, what's great working with uh, these writers is that uh, they're very tight, they work together, uh, yeah. talk all the time. And so they're basically formulating this stuff on a daily basis. So when we get the initial kind of kernel of the idea, they've already kind of baked in all these ways that it impacts other books. And that's how we're going to get greater tie into Justice mm -hmm. League because these guys now have the ability to touch the Flash and all these other characters yeah. that they write separately. Awesome. All right, so what else do we got this week? All right, uh, you know, I'm gonna move over to uh, Batman. So this is, uh, you know, this is, you know, talk about Scott Snyder and he's just been this driving force for the DC Universe for many, many years. The other sort of pillar uh, of content creation really has been Tom King. He's just been killing it. Uh, his Batman stuff has been amazing. Obviously, if you've been reading this, it's the gift. And uh, it, it, it really, to me, in reading this, it just demonstrates how he's really at the top of his game. He's basically mm -hmm. taken a three-part story and it feels like this massive epic because he's kind of created this alternate timeline. Yeah. So basically, Booster Gold hears that Batman and Catwoman are gonna get married and he comes back in time to give him a gift. And he knows uh, of the story where where Superman basically uh, gets a uh, starro like starfish on his face, and he um, lives in this alternate dimension where Krypton's been destroyed, and he's super happy. And then he realizes that this is not reality, and he kind of shends perfection or paradise to return back to reality. Mm -hmm. And so uh, Booster wants to do something similar with Batman, and he basically said, "I'm going to give you this amazing gift. I'm going to save your parents from getting killed." But what he doesn't realize is that it unleashes hell. Basically, Batman ends up happy, he's living there with his parents, but the rest of Gotham City is a mess. Yeah. It, you know, the world is a mess in this very dystopic alternate reality. And what the twist with the story is that ba Batman, Bruce Wayne, when he's told that this has happened, he's there in the mansion with mm -hmm. his mother and father at this big party, and he's like, I'm okay with this. I'm happy, I, yeah. you know? And, yeah. and he doesn't take the Superman route and say, I want to restore it back. And yep. so, 
Booster Gold has to figure out a way to do it. And it's very, very cleverly written and created, and Tony Daniels kills it on the art. Catwoman is just amazing in this series. I don't think she has that, says anything other than meow, meow, <laughs> and you know, and... Uh, it's like there's too many other things going on. Yeah, that, yeah, right, That's all right. we need from her. It right. works. And, and you realize, oh, it's really dangerous to assume in any alternate reality, because we've all visited several, uh, that people are essentially the same, but they're mm -hmm. not. And I think, you know, he busts her out of Arkham Asylum. She's a serial killer. She's seriously crazy. And uh, he brings her to this climactic event, thinking it's going to solve it. And it does, but in an unintended way. So yeah. I don't want to ruin it, but it's 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 definitely worth a read. Definitely keep reading that one. And what else is coming out this week? Uh, we have the latest uh, New Age of Heroes book, mm -hmm. Challengers. Uh, it's also written by uh, Scott Snyder and a gentleman named Aaron Gillespie, and obviously drawn by Andy Kubert and inked by Klaus Janssen. Uh, they obviously worked on DK3 together, mm -hmm. an amazing uh, art pair. But basically, it's a revamp of the Challengers of the Unknown. I always never really understood exactly what the driving concept of the Challengers was, and they completely just nail it in this first issue. And yeah. they basically say these are everyday people from different walks of life. There's a cop, there's a sort of a, a herbal medicine woman, and they're selected by this weird organization to uh, solve the mysteries of the universe. But the conceit is that they are all dead. They mm -hmm. just, they were plucked from that moment when they were gonna die. So they're living on borrowed time yeah. and they're given this mission. And a lot of them don't wanna do the mission. Yep. So there's this real conflict that they've created. There's this mysterious organization they create. Uh, they allude to the previous challenges of the known. So they really have taken that core group, which I always thought was just a bunch of four dudes <laughs> going yeah. on adventures yeah. together uh, that were fearless and have kind of given it a- Like a uh, reason why they're fearless. Exactly. If they choose to- do the missions that they're sent on. Right, and then there's stakes involved. Like they, uh, it's a little bit of a Suicide Squad thing where they're kind of forced to do it, yep. even if they don't want to. Uh, that there have been different groups of challengers over the ages. So it really is uh, much more epic in scope than what was previously done. And I think, again, it's you know Scott Snyder as best and yeah. working with Aaron Gillespie was his protege. And so it's really, really cool. Awesome. And then we can't talk about this week's books without talking about Wild Story. Yeah. So, uh, I, you know, every day when I leave the office, I, I see you talking to Warren Ellis <laughs> out there. And it's like, Still one of my favorite chats. Well, yeah, no. And you got him to smile. And, and I was like, <laughs> wow, this is like, you know, he's so serious and so intense. And uh, it was really great you brought, um, uh, you brought that kind of charm out of him. And I'll tell you that uh, I get asked a lot, like, what's happening with the Wildstorm universe? And I, and I point people to this book because I think what Warren has done has just been fabulous. Uh, I think the 13th issue is coming out. Um, the second trade, right, mm -hmm. um, which really continues the story. And it's, look, it's it's hard to encapsulate in, like, five seconds. Yeah. But at the end of the day, it's really informed, I think, by Warren Ellis's, he's been writing novels. And to me, if you can invest the time into this, you will be rewarded ten, tenfold in that, uh, he's got so much nuance built between the characters. Mm -hmm. He's taking the original mythology and overlaid different elements of science fiction, uh, science fact. Uh, you know, he talks about the Gaian bottleneck theory. I'm like, what is this? And yeah. I'm Googling yeah. it and it's, oh, this is a real thing. And, yep. and he talks really about how civilizations often die much too quickly to sort of escape their their home world. Mm -hmm. that, that for a species to truly survive, they have to basically reach out to the stars because so much can go wrong on any yeah. given planet. And that's why when the Caribou crash land on Earth before, they kind of decided they're gonna save humanity. And how does that play out thousands of years later? And uh, so it's really not just about reinventing the superhero mythology that was you know, launched in the 90s, but he's really given this whole science fiction vibe to it. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of facts and just knowledge he's throwing left and right. It makes a lot of sense, actually. It feels yeah. believable, yeah. you know? <laughs> and uh, I have to, you know, um, give credit to uh, John Davis Hunt. He is a mm -hmm. tremendous artist. There's a lot of, like, just people talking and nuances of gestures, but he nails all that really, really well. And then he draws these spectacular settings, like he'll draw, like, Amsterdam or yeah. a city. And I go, like, I've been on that corner. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, he really, really just uh, has a style that really brings you into that world. And the storytelling he's doing is, is masterful. And I'm just so happy that we had this vision for this book. Yeah. Um, we knew it was a huge undertaking because it's so many issues and he basically wanted to tell a story long form, right? And it's one long story that he's telling and Michael Craig kind of ties into it. And there's other stuff that we're spinning out of this that we haven't announced yet. So it, this is still, uh, I think maybe probably the 
middle part of this big story that mm -hmm. he's telling and uh, it's just been amazing to see roll out and it's just masterful and how he's bringing characters from the Stormwatch. Yeah. One of the things I said to him was like, look, uh, I don't know what your previous work in relationship, you know, what, what you did at D DC, but when we were at Wildstorm, we gave you, you know, freedom to just yeah. create and do whatever you wanted. And he said, well, I kind of want to do this. And it's really radically different. And I'm just like, go, because yeah. I think that's the kind of stuff that we need. We can always go back and revisit the past if we need to, but to create something new and sort of reimagine it for today's audience, and it's not just in the writing, but the, the gra graphics, the covers, the, you know, the, the spot uh, placement of the red, even the logos are mm -hmm. very, very different. And yeah. you know, talk about futurism, to me, he's like reinventing sort of how comic books, the narrative is told. And you know, from the uh, fonts that he uses and the slow pace, kind of the, the, the novel pace of how he's kind of bringing this all out, uh, it's really just uh, majestic. And I'll tell you that, He's a guy, if you read this book, you'll feel smarter. You, you'll feel like your IQ <laughs> is so going true. up. It's so true. You and, feel dumb for a second right, 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 while you're like, what's that? Yeah, oh, and right. then you finish and you're yeah. like, yes. Yes, and, and then you walk away and you go, oh wait, what, well, what just <laughs> happened? I can't remember all the de details, but it really makes you feel like, wow, this is like really, when we talk about world building, he's like universe building, mm -hmm. right? So we get the full benefit of his creativity and his wisdom and his intellect, and it's great to see that on, on a regular basis. That's a look at some of this week's best comics, and here is a complete rundown of the new DC books out today. from around the multiverse. In TV news, the DC season is wrapping up in typically epic fashion. So don't miss the finale of Gotham at 8 p.m. tomorrow night on Fox. And then switch over to the CW to catch the conclusion of Arrow at 9 p.m. On the animation side, the DC superhero girls are taking on the students of a nefarious new school in Lego DC Superhero Girls Super Villain High. And you can catch all the action on DVD right now. Meanwhile, DC Collectibles has three new statues out this month. The Girl of Steel is the latest addition to the DC Cover Girls line, while the Batman Black and White collection is getting a new piece designed by Jonathan Matthews. Plus, two of DC's oldest enemies are locking horns again in the Batman vs. the Joker Lasco battle statue. Dark Knight's Metal is one of DC's most popular publishing events in recent years. And you can see how it all began in the new hardcover collected edition called Dark Days, The Road to Metal. It's also a great way to get a jump on Justice League, No Justice. So be sure to grab your copies starting today. And finally, Vertigo just announced the artists that are joining the Sandman universe. The Dreaming will come to life at the hands of Vilquis Evely. Domo will be the architect of the House of Whispers. Max and Seba Fumara will get their devilish spin on Lucifer. And Tom Fowler will provide art for Books of Magic. The adventure begins with the Sandman Universe number one on August 8th. Well, that's the news for now, but don't click away because we've got more right after the panel of the week. The finale of Arrow's sixth season is tomorrow, and if the title of the episode is any indication, there are some serious changes in store for Oliver's team. We've got Echo Kellum, AKA Mr. Terrific, here with a preview of the episode called Life Sentence. I think the title Life Sentence uh, may refer to some impending plans Diaz has in place. It, it might refer to the fact that we are all stuck with each other forever. Um, I mean, it could, it could definitely reference a lot of different things. I think you'll see at the end of the um, episode kind of what it really is hitting on and referencing them. Curtis's role is helping facilitate the large pushback against Diaz. You know, I think um, that's all their roles for this episode is making sure that they can save the city. I mean, that's what it's always been about from day one for Oliver and Co. And so, they're all just kind of a hands on deck. We gotta stop Diaz at any cost and um, try to shut down his ability to just take over the city and, you know, just kind of ensue this kind of um, corrupt and, you know, uh, mal maleficent like force that's there. Yes, in the season finale, I mean, 
everything hits the fan. Uh, you know, Diaz has really put a strong foothold into the city. Uh, and so I think you'll see our heroes kind of put in a predicament in a place that you've never seen them in, in a season finale. Uh, I think it'll be really fun and exciting and it'll definitely leave you questioning what's happening next season. But I think it'll be a lot of action, a, a lot of suspense and some tears maybe too. <laughs> yeah, the direction I see Curtis going in season seven is, I like to fly on T-spheres. I mean, that's pretty much the biggest thing I would like to do. That would be awesome. <laughs> um, but I mean, I just think leaning more into the tech. That's, that's really what I like to do. And also, I, I would like to add, really getting that love life popping, you know, just getting it, you know, getting it going with a nastis, hot nastis or, you know, whatever. Like, I, I think, you know, he deserves to have that happiness, you know, and to have someone to come home to who gets him, who isn't trying to stop him from being who he is and just loves him unconditionally. I hope he definitely gets that, too. So I think you should dress the part. I spare made up. It's no rule saying there can't be more than one green arrow. I should have done this from the beginning. All of our disagreement was never about the uniform. I know that. I'd like to apologize for any part that I played in it. I really thought I wanted this mantle. It means something. You've made it mean something. When our city looks at it, it gives them all bottom. And it would be diminished if there was more than one. For everything along the way. Thank you. Hello! Uh, excuse me. Hello, everybody. <laughs> My name is Anatoly Knyazev, and I'm here to turn myself in. We, we also have uh, costume parties in Russia. It's always great fun. What do you have, Anatoly? Address for Diaz. He said to meet him there in one hour, but he's not going to be alone. He's bringing longbow hunters. Oh, what now? Three assassins that even the League is afraid of. Well, they were because the last one died out in the 1950s. Well, that's what they wanted people to think. We got the FBI back on us. Please tell me we're not afraid of three guys. Hell no. Let's get ready to move. I'll go tell Agent Watson. Before we go, we've got a hardcover copy of Dark Days, The Road to Metal, and a new Batman black and white statue by Jonathan Matthews. And guess what? We're giving them both away to one of you. For your chance to win, visit dccomics.com slash watch and win and fill out the form with your information. It is so easy, even your friend who can never get the words to happy birthday right could totally do it. Good luck and we'll see you next time.